English for fear of destroying the language of Dante. But um, in this next session, we'd like to build on what we have found out this morning. It's very easy to, to kind of forget the discussions, but we saw this morning some very interesting data, whether it is just for Italy, I don't know, but it seems to be some similar themes internationally about what users really want, and you saw that big word efficiency out there, and not so much what we tend to propose today, which is the legal syllogism system, and then we saw in the second part what the providers are looking at, and even the providers themselves, although they say rule of law is number one in terms of product, there's an understanding that we need to find balances and we need to be able to adjust the case to what the parties want. But we saw some surprises there also today, I think, that created some obstacles between what the users want and what can be provided. And so this session examines and starts to look at this. We started to build on what we saw in the data this morning. And so for this third session, I'd like to invite, first of all, uh, His Honor Judge Marinari to uh, come to the dais together with uh, Patricia Ismarti from the NL Group, uh, Andrea Carlevares, very well known to many of us, uh, who recently um, has just decided to take the next exciting um, step in his career and has left the ICC behind. Um, but we all know him and uh, appreciate very much all the efforts he's done at the ICC. Uh, Laura Ristori, who's a mediator here in Florence. Colin Rule from Madria. Um, and there we'll get some real insights into what the future of conflict resolution can look like, especially as we think about how to integrate and use technology. And Barbara Varvas, who's here, um, well, when I say here, it's comparative law, so I guess it's everywhere, but uh, at the Hague University, um, but who hails from here to some extent as well. So um, thank you very much for the panel. What we'll do as usual is, um, well, I suppose we do because we're trying to get and stick to this, uh, this tight timing process, uh, and we are uh, a bit behind schedule already as we start lunch. We're technically half an hour late almost, uh, but that's okay, we'll catch up. And we have a play tonight for the children, so we have to make sure that we finish on time. Um, so let's make sure that we, we do that, and let's go straight to the questions, if we may. Um, so what we should have now on the screen, and I'll try and cut out all the other screens that we do not need, and I'll start again. All right. Mm. Well, I'll take care of the others later on. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to uh, the core questions for session three. If my system is working, and it does not seem to be. Uh, so I'll need some technical support for that. But what I'll ask you to then please do is to go through the questions one by one, uh, at your speed and to vote on them. everything. And maybe Chrome is more reliable, I don't know. the screen back. Thank you. So we are core questions, session three. And you have your usual first question about your stakeholder group.
Okay, so let me, let me get to that. Um, okay, so um, let, me, let me get to that. Let's do question 3-1. It's, it's on 3-3 yet. That you have the comment? 3-2. So let's just do 3-1 first. So the, the question is, what are the main obstacles or challenges that parties face when they're trying to resolve disputes? Are they, one, emotional, social, or cultural? Two, financial or time related? Three, an inadequate range of options actually available to them? Or four, insufficient knowledge of the options available to them? Or five, uncertainty or other? And now getting to question two, where there's apparently some clarification on the translation. To improve the future of commercial dispute resolution, which of the following processes and tools should be prioritized? So now we're really looking at a list of things. Maybe you don't like any of them, but we're looking at which of them should be a priority out of this list in first, second, and third order. So if you think the most important should be more emphasis on adjudicative dispute resolution methods, litigation or arbitration, select one. If you think it is combining adjudicative and non-adjudicative methods, that's two. If it is encouragement by the courts on the parties and the providers to reduce uh, costs and time. Um, so it's encouragement by the courts and not of the courts, but by the courts that they need to be driving this. Uh, number four, uh, non-adjudicative dispute resolution methods, so basically mediation conciliation on its own. Um, and then five, pre-dispute or pre-escalation processes um, before any of the above have happened. Or again, we come back to technology, uh, greater use of technology to enable foster, cheaper, better outcomes. So which of them should be prioritized? And you have three choices. Is anybody not ready to go to question three? Please raise your hands. Okay, a few hands. So question three for those, because I think there are, most are already. Um, which of the following areas would most improve commercial dispute resolution? We've got several choices here. Is it one, the accreditation or certification of providers? That's option number one. Is it two, cost sanctions against parties for failing to try non-adjudicative processes before adjudicative ones? So punishing people for not trying mediation conciliation before doing uh, litigation or arbitration. Number three, legislation or conventions to promote the recognition and enforcement of settlements reached through mediation or conciliation. So in other words, a bit like we have for arbitration, a convention doing that for mediated outcomes as well. Number four, quality control and complaint mechanisms for providers, so if you have a complaint against a provider, you're able to um, go through a process to register complaints. Five is use of protocols that promote non-adjudicative processes, but with the ability to opt out of them. So you promote them, and you promote the use of non-adjudicative before adjudicative, but people can opt out and without punishment. Uh, and then six are the rules governing third-party funding. Is it important to change or modify rules regarding funding by third parties?
Please raise your hands if you're not ready for question four. So it seems everybody is. Question four, which stakeholders are likely to be most resistant to change? Who is likely to be the most resistant to change uh, in commercial dispute resolution practices? Is it the adjudicative providers, the judges and arbitrators? Is it the external lawyers, option two? Is it the governments or ministries of justice, number three? Is it in-house counsel, number four? Is it non-adjudicative providers, meaning mediators and conciliators, uh, as choice number five? Or is it the non-legal parties themselves? In other words, companies or users, uh, small companies, whatever, but not the lawyers who work for them. Finally, if you're ready for question five, which stakeholders have the potential to be most influential in bringing about change? So this is different. Before it was who's going to be resistant to change. Here is who can have the greatest impact on making change happen. And you have the same choices as before. Adjudicative providers, you know, in the same order. So please choose. And with that, I think we have our voting ready. So I will invite our panel to retire to their room so they can discuss um, the, road, the votes. And uh, Marcello, if you can be back in, if you can do it in 20 minutes, that would be great. 20 minutes is good? OK. Uh, and do you know where the room is? It's right. Um, Kara, uh, is she, yeah, can you show them where the room is? Thank you. All right, so um, we have our work to do, but now we know exactly what happens and it's very efficient by now, I hope. We're gonna have our discussion questions. So if I could ask you to go to session three, and everybody's tired, so we've chosen some really controversial issues for you for this one. So we actually have one more question than usual, because now you need to do more in, in the same amount of time. So again, please in your groups of three, uh, write down who you are by email so we can identify you. But then what we really wanted to do is you want to talk about what needs to be changed. So we ask you first to talk about the things that don't need to be changed. Okay, what is good the way it is that you don't want to change? So let's understand what was working well for you. So what does not need to be changed is your first discussion. In your second discussion, what can easily be overcome that needs to be changed? So small changes that can easily be done. The next thing is gonna be things that are difficult to change. And the final thing, we want the things that appear to you to be impossible to change. What appears impossible to change, but is really important to change. Okay, so those are your questions, and we have 20 minutes to have these discussions. And please, the rapporteurs, remember to put in your data, and happy conversations. <laughs>